All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Brittany Gibson, and I'm a therapist here with Care to Change. I am a licensed clinical social worker, and I've been practicing in the field for about eight years now. Um, and I've worked uh, a lot with um, addictive behaviors in general, a lot with depression and anxiety and um, kind of the severe mental illness track. Uh, so what I want to talk about today is just a different behavior, different addictive behaviors during COVID. Talking about lots of different things. You know, we, we, we hear addiction, we think substance use. That tends to be where our mind goes. But what I also want to kind of put in this category is also emotional eating, shopping, um, destructive behaviors, or what we like to call maladaptive behaviors. Away from where you want to be, uh, that take away from your goals. Um, also, during this time, we're seeing that behaviors that maybe you have dealt with in the past, um, that you had coped with successfully and you were doing well, right now they're kind of creeping back up on us. Um, and all of these um, cause, and all of these are changing the way that we're coping and we're reverting back to some old ways. Um, and right now, this time can be very challenging for a lot of different reasons um, and what we consider a high risk time, not just for people that have past addictive behaviors, but also can be high risk due to um, for future addictive behaviors um, based on how we deal with right now. Um, so right now, you know, we're going through kind of this uncertainty and stress with the global pandemic. You know, we're spending a lot of time in quarantine, and this can take a serious mental toll um, for anybody. And so part of that reason for this impact and for the quarantine is it's had three key elements on our mental health and things that it's taken away from us. It's taken away our autonomy, our ability to make decisions on our own, our ability to go out and do things, and to use a lot of our coping strategies. You know, a lot of times we recommend, um, you know, going out and seeing friends, uh, going to meetings, you know, talking to a therapist, getting out can really help your mood. And being quarantined inside has really taken away that autonomy to make our own decisions. It's also taken away a lot of our competency. We've been told we're not able to do things that we have worked for us in the past. We've been told that we're not allowed to make our own decisions. And we're essentially told that we're incompetent right now. That we as people are not able to, to make those choices for ourselves. And it's also taken away a lot of our connectedness. You know, we are human beings, we are social beings, um, and that's how we were made. And so re being isolated, being home has taken away a lot of our ability to connect with people, to feel like we're um, in this world and that we matter and that we have people who love and care about us. And so being home has taken that away from us too. And so the isolation imposed by the quarantine has been leaving us feeling like we have no control over the situation. We're feeling cut off from the rest of the world and unable to perform just our usual day-to-day -day activity. You know, we're not able to, um, day-to-day -day coping things that really have worked for us in the past and so it's really kind of challenged our way of being right now our way of coping has been pulled from us which can then lead to some higher situations and can lead to reverting to um, addictive behaviors in the past or even just leading to new addictions and like I say when I say addictions I'm talking about the whole spectrum of things so substance use emotional eating shopping any destructive behaviors and because of the current um, climate, you know, being in quarantine, our body kind of hears that and has immediately been triggered to go into the trauma response or the fight or flight mode. Um, and when your body is triggered to go into this, we revert back to very kind of ways of being and why we can revert back to old coping that we may have overcome in the past. You know, our body is increasing in chemicals right now. We're feeling a lot of cortisol. We're feeling a lot of adrenaline just because that fight or flight response that's kind of here in the back of our brains has been ignited. It's been lit. And so that can be why you're feeling a lot of tension in your body. Um, and so, you know, we have a lot of fears right now over our health, over safety, over food. 
you know, our basic um, needs are being called into question right now, which is why we are also kind of reverting back or kind of feeling like we need to be in, in crisis mode or feeling like we need to kind of use things to help us cope. Um, and it's also bringing up a lot of old trauma for people too. You know, things in the past, maybe when we, um, you know, didn't have food period of time in our life or when we didn't have housing or when we had to be isolated, it's triggering a lot of things for us, which then brings up old habits and old coping. Um, so when we have something like this that's happened, that's taken away our autonomy, our competency, our connectedness, you know, we're reverting back to a crisis response, to a trauma response, which then can lead to addictions or coping in ways that are going to give us instant gratification, that are going to instantly make us feel better. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, warning signs to be on the lookout for something like this. Um, you know, if you're struggling with an addiction in the past or you're currently struggling now, there's some warning have led up to where you are right now. Um, and that should be continued to kind of monitor as we, we move through the pandemic and move through the quarantine. Um, a lot of rage, so sudden and angry outbursts, trouble just controlling your emotions in general. Um, you know, a lot of times when we're, we feel that stress, we feel that crisis response, we feel it in our chest, we could feel it in our stomach. Um, and we need to get that energy out some way. And so, you know, those are some warning signs. Um, excessive um, rumination or just racing thoughts, unable to turn your mind off. You know, if you're having trouble sleeping at night, um, those are all kind of high risk and warning signs um, that, you know, could let us know that, you know, maybe it's not right. Maybe we're kind of struggling a little more than we thought we were. Um, chronic negativity, feeling like, um, you know, nothing's going right for you. Um, you know, maybe you've lost your job or you're furloughed or you have to file for unemployment. Again, a lot of basic needs um, may not be being met right now, which can lead to feeling very um, negative. Uh, we can also have anxiety, self-harming, um, excessive guilt, crying, um, you know, just feeling low mood, feeling unmotivated to get out of bed or even just unmotivated to get dressed, you know, with um, being home a lot, we don't have the obligations of getting up and going to work, some of us. And so that could lead us to falling out of a routine. Could be a lot of shame, um, you know, a lot of um, issues related to, to body. Um, if you struggle with emotional eating, that could lead to more body imaging issues. Um, and also kind of looking for changes in um, sleeping habits, changing in eating habits, um, isolating even further, you know, if you have people that are trying to reach out to you and you're kind of turning your phone off or you're not wanting to, to talk to other people, um, all of those things are kind of leading up to something bigger. It could be leading up to a relapse or kind of leading up to um, reverting to our old behavior, what we know best. Um, you know, we are people of habit too. And so if our habit had been cope a different way. That's what we're going to revert back to in this time, um, which is why it's super important to kind of think about other ways to cope right now, um, other resources, other ways of um, reaching out to people to get back those three things that we, that I had mentioned, you know, ways to try to get back our autonomy, our um, connectedness, and our competency. You know, those are three things that we are missing right now in our life. And so, we need to do what we can to try to get that back, to feel like we are taking control back. Um, and so right now, you know, we need community and accountability. If you're struggling with any type of substance use or addiction, community is super important. You know, feeling like you're not alone in this. Addiction is the disease of isolation. You know, our addictions can tell us that we're alone and it can lead us to feeling shame and guilt. And so, even more so, we need to do some opposite action to reach out to people to, um, you know, get that sense of community. Reaching out to a sponsor, to a pastor or a trusted friend in any way possible. That to feel that sense of community, to feel that sense of connectedness. Um, a lot of groups right now are meeting virtually through, through Zoom, kind of what we're doing right now. 
uh, they're meeting this way so that we can still feel a sense of connectedness so that we can know that this, you know, this person that I'm talking with, they care about me and they want me to reach out to them. And so that we can help them do better, help them cope with what they're going through. Uh, so like I said, a sponsor, a pastor, a trusted friend, um, Alcoholics Anonymous now has moved all of their meetings um, online through Zoom and Google Hangouts. What is really cool about this time is that we can try different groups that we may not have tried before. So if you're on the east side of town and you know you want to try a group on the west side, you know, if we're meeting on Google Hangouts or Zoom, we can try different groups to see um, you know, what works best, or we can meet new people, um, expand our circle, um, celebrate recovery is also meeting through Zoom, as well as Narcotics Anonymous, Smart Recovery, Life Recovery, all of those are now meeting online, and you just go to their websites, they've made it pretty easy where you just go on their website, um, type in where your zip code is, and they'll pull up um, the links to get started, um, the links to join and what, how they're meeting and where as far as um, days and times. Also joining a small group at a local church can be another good way to feel connected right now and feel that sense of community. Um, they are also kind of meeting online and so reaching out to local organizations, local churches um, to be put into a small group where you can meet people who um, are kind of going through similar things as you, but also so that you can relate and um, get that connectedness back um, and that accountability that we may be missing right now. So that's kind of one need that and way to cope um, is to join any type of virtual online community right now, or even just reaching out to your community right now. Uh, right now is a great time to start any new project or hobby that you may have been thinking about in the past. You know, I, I know I've always said, oh, when I have time, I can do something like that. Now is that time. If you've wanted to uh, paint or um, take up woodworking or any type of hobby, crocheting, now is a perfect time to do that. You know, we've got a little bit more time. Our activities might look a little bit different. So there's no way, better way to get out of your head and into something with your, than with your hands. It adds value to your day. It makes you feel productive and joy. And those are wonderful emotions to be feeling right now, um, to feeling like you're being productive and getting some joy out of our day to day. These will also reduce anxiety, depression, um, and kind of take you hopefully out of that high risk category. Um, so like I said, puzzles, woodworking, painting, gardening, uh, we're starting to kind of get into some nice weather. And so gardening, yard work is another great kind of hobby to start working on right now. Um, it's a sense of accomplishment, um, you know, especially if we're able to make things grow. Um, all of these things, you be able to, to do something with your hands can be a good distraction, good hobby to get you working on right now. Um, so we ha also have exercise, another great way to kind of cope with maybe some anxiety or some um, stress that you're feeling in your body from that trauma response being triggered, um, going for a walk. I know a lot of parks, um, their trails are still open, the state parks, um, kind of getting out that way, going on some hikes, going and sitting by some lakes. Those can be really great ways to kind of get out in nature and kind of help cope. Movement is another great tool in recovery, um, you know, getting getting, you know, um, kind of the blood flowing can release a lot of really good chemicals and help you feel really great. So being as active as possible right now, trying to get out at least once a day just to kind of walk, enjoy things. Um, you know, we have deep breathing, uh, mindfulness, meditation, being present, focusing on, you know, one day at a time, one hour. That's another kind of thing that we talk about is you know, I'm going to focus on right now. I'm not going to worry about tomorrow or the future. I'm going to focus on today and what are my goals and plans for today. Um, another good way to cope right now is to complete a self-discovery or a reflection activity or a Bible study. You know, really reflecting on this time right now and why it's triggering for you. You know, what is it, what responses is it bringing up for you? What memories, what thoughts? Um, and so really trying to um, put into play what's going on for you in your mind. Uh, there's a lot of great Bible studies, um, self-discovery activities. Uh, Try Softer is a really good one. 
um, it's not supposed to be this way, or detours are all really great ways to kind of um, just learn more about yourself right now um, and trying to come out of, of, of this time um, stronger, um, more knowledgeable, more insight into your being. Another great way is to challenge your thoughts and challenge your behaviors. A little bit off of the, you know, the self-reflection is, you know, looking at your thoughts, asking yourself, what am I thinking? What is triggering for me? You know, this behavior, what does this say about me? Um, you know, and asking yourself, is this thought I'm feeling of hopelessness or isolation, is that rational or is it the situation? Is it you know, me feeling isolated? And if that's the case, then let's reach out to somebody. Let's, you know, call a friend, call a community member, small group, you know, really challenging that thought process. Um, could your thought be distorted? Um, is, is your depression or anxiety or your addiction telling you something that may not be true? Um, you know, identifying what you're feeling, understanding the difficult feelings that you're having right now, understanding that they're normal, um, you know, we're off. So allowing yourself to feel that emotion right now, it's okay. Um, allow yourself to be in that moment and then choosing a different behavior, choosing to um, cope in a more positive way um, and making that a conscious choice. Um, and again, it's okay to not be okay right now, but asking for help and communicating how you're feeling is the most important thing right now. Um, and finding that person that you trust to let them know, you know, if you may or may not be doing well. Um, another good way to cope right now is to take breaks from watching, reading, or listening to news stories. Uh, and this includes social media. You know, right now, our mind being that it's triggered, you know, we're kind of in the fight or flight response. We're also taking in a lot of information on social media that may not be the healthiest. You know, we're taking in things that may or not may not be truthful. Um, it could be have a skewed perception. And so really trying to ask yourself, where is this information coming from? Is it coming from a trusted source that I would, I would believe that I would recommend to a friend? Um, or even just, you know, limiting it, say, you know what, I'm going to allow you know, a half hour in the morning and a half hour at night, um, and just to kind of update myself. Because um, a lot of times if we sit on social media or sit reading the news, it can really change our perspective and it can change our mindset. Just, you know, we may be doing really well and positive, but it can take us to a more negative um, route and kind of down that rabbit hole where we feel hopeless. We feel like things aren't gonna change. And so making the conscious choice and effort of, I'm gonna stop social media today, or I'm gonna stop it for the week. Because I wanna make an effort to change my perspective and to you know, look at things differently and be a little bit more happy. Um, and so hearing about the pandemic repeatedly can be super upsetting. Uh, you know, personally, I've limited my social media intake just because you know, the information people are posting may or may not be real. And, um, you know, at least me to feeling um, anxious about it. So I've made the decision, I'm going to limit it right now. And I think that that's okay. And anybody who wants to do that right now, I think is a, is a good choice. Um, you know, lastly, too, kind of take care of yourself. Take care of your body. You know, one of the warning signs I mentioned was um, having trouble eating and sleeping. Um, and so if you're having trouble sleeping, trying to establish good sleep habits, you know, turning off your phone, turning off the TV, maybe doing a, a relaxation or a mindfulness on um, YouTube as you're trying to fall asleep, taking deep breaths, stretching, using an app to kind of help walk you through some sort of guided meditation or guided imagery, eating healthy, well-balanced meals. Um, that's going to, again, make you feel good about yourself, make you feel productive, make you feel joyful. You know, what you're putting in your mood and so making sure you're nourishing your body and taking care of yourself. Exercising regularly, getting plenty of sleep, um, you know, and avoiding alcohol and drugs as much as you can. Um, and if you do feel like you're on the verge of a relapse or, you know, you're struggling, making sure that you reach out to somebody, um, whether that be a therapist or, um, you know, a sponsor, pastor, anybody who can help you get back on track or help you work through this really difficult time. Um, and I want to say, too, 
giving yourself grace and forgiveness right now as we're all kind of navigating through this. You know, let go of the day at the end of the day and saying, you know what, tomorrow's a new day and I'm gonna start fresh and this is my plan and I'm gonna work through it. Um, and again, starting anew each day. Um, and above all, if you notice any of the warning signs reaching out as much as possible, um, or even if you're noticing a change in your thoughts too, that's another kind of warning sign is, is changing our thoughts, changing our behaviors. Um, there's things that leads up to a relapse. And so making sure that we can identify those so that we can prevent that and help you get through that. Um, know that Care to Change is here for you during this time, um, and we are here to help um, in any way possible get through this difficult time. You are not alone. Uh, we are here, and we are all in this together. Um, you know, if you feel like you're struggling or if you need some additional help, um, you can contact us at help at caretochange.org. We'd be happy to answer any questions for you. Um, and so we can do whatever we can to kind of help you 